A trip to Cuddyhunk is, by definition, an adventure. It begins on the docks of New Bedford, where a single daily ferry is the only means of getting to this distant outpost, the westernmost of the Elizabeth Islands. And this will be that rare tank-away visit where the car is left behind. I mean, people just walk in the middle of the roads. You see, the only transportation out here is by foot or golf cart. The better to take in this single square mile of ragged, raw beauty. We have views all over the place. Every time you go around a corner, there's another view, and it's just part of our daily routine. Seth Garfield's daily commute makes his point. We've been raising oysters out here since 1981. Garfield's Cuddy Hunk Shellfish Farms is out in the West End Pond by the Bartholomew Gosnold Monument, which commemorates the very first English settlement in New England. But history is everywhere out here. Really a lot of history and a lot of big fish. <laughs> the Cuddy Hunk Fishing Club, founded after the Civil War by wealthy New York businessmen and oil barons. The island is renowned for its world-class surf casting. Here at the club, the cream of society, including presidents Teddy Roosevelt and William Taft, would loosen their cummerbunds and take a walk on the wild side, fishing for stripers, smoking cigars, and drinking fine liqueurs. Each member would have a key and a number to their cabinet. They would take and they would store all their booze in there because it was, it was very valuable. We asked Cheryl Goslin, a seventh generation cuddy hunker, why the keys? Was there no trust among the tycoons? No, no, you couldn't trust the islanders. <laughs> oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Today, this once exclusive club is open to the public, May to October. Now, the average Joe can come stay here, and we welcome everyone. The only other option for overnighters, just up the hill. And when you're here, you just get to settle in and relax and kind of forget about the, all the distractions of the, of the world. The Avalon was once the private home of Tamalin Baumgarten's grandfather. Today it is an inn owned in partnership between the town and her family. I kind of feel like you're stepping back in time when you're here. You leave your keys, your wallet, your phone, you, you kind of forget where those things are. During our visit, Baumgarten, a painter, is hosting an artist retreat at the Avalon. None of them have been here before. And when they come, they really get to relax and soak in the magic of this place. Cuddy Hunk's tiny year-round population is dwindling. Up at the last one-room schoolhouse in the state, there are only two students in Michelle Carvalho's class this year. The only food store? The Island Market, where most everyone keeps a tab. You don't have to carry a wallet. You don't have to do a lot of things we do in the city. Cuddy Hunk is a cash-only kind of place, says store owner Chris Lombard. Credit cards are no good at the end or here at the store. We're kind of hanging in there with our old-fashioned ways. Cuddy Hunk may be off the radar for your typical beach-seeking vacationer, but it's a hot spot on nautical maps. Sailors love it. We have a great safe harbor. As the season winds down, one harbor amenity is motoring along. Good evening. Can we offer you anything from the raw bar this evening? We do a floating raw bar. We basically have a floating farm stand that goes out to the visiting yachtsman. Seth Garfield wholesales his oysters to restaurants in Boston and New York, but he also sells direct from dock and dinghy. Here comes our oysters. The floating farm stand, just another local idiosyncrasy that ensures Cuddy Hunk will always remain an island unto itself. And just a quick note, all of the elements in tonight's show were filmed prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Avalon and the Cuddy Hunk Fishing Club opened this summer to limited capacity. The fishing club is open through Sunday, although their restaurant was unable to open this season. 
The Kadayank Ferry is still operational. Some people who live on the island work on the mainland, and that is their only form of transportation. The ferry has reduced capacity, and travelers must wear masks while on board. Up next, by rescuing a historic home in Wolfboro, they became heroes.